So the first message here is um, not to scare you guys. I'm getting the energy of somebody who's a tattletale, who's like a know-it-all. They like to catch people, make mistakes, just so they can one-up the other person. I don't feel it's coming from you. You're definitely not, you know, uh, linking up with that energy. But this is somebody who's like, um, it's not like they have a specific agenda towards you or, you know, towards a specific person. It's just they're like, I'm the best. I know it all. And... Um, Watch me catch everybody making mistakes. I'm going to tell the higher ups. I'm going to tell the boss and I'm going to, you know, show everyone how smart I am and, and things like that. It's a very, very insecure, childish type of a person that you might be dealing with in your work environment. OK, it's somebody who's like um, on their high horse thinking they're better than everybody else and tattletale. OK, so a tattletale. Um, in some instances, this can relate to children, okay? I see in this card, somebody like that little child who's like the tattletale hides behind his mom's skirt. So it's like they, they run back, they, they, tell, they tell your business, and then they run back and retreat and hide behind their mom's skirts. So if you are in particular dealing with children, just be a little careful, Okay. Um, be careful with your words because, you know, children, they have a habit of, um, they, they don't have a filter and they don't know the nuances between what's appropriate to repeat and what's not appropriate, right? So just be very, very careful. Um, if you're dealing with children, I feel like the, the situation is very, very minor. But if you're dealing with an adult, I feel like the situation is a little bit more difficult. So um, what you say can be misconstrued and can come back to haunt you. <laughs> so just be careful. Um, there's another message. I totally forgot. Um, so it came out when I was shuffling. Let me try to backtrack. Okay, yes. So... Oh my gosh, it slipped my mind. But it came out when I was shuffling these three cards here. So let me try to... Okay, anyways, we'll move on. If it comes back, it'll come back. If it's meant to come back, it'll come back. Okay, so let me talk to you about the person that you're dealing with. We have an air sign, once again, that is showing up. So Aquarius, Gemini, Libra. And Libra is highly coming out in this spread. So we have here the King of Swords. And um, this is air sign energy, uh, sun, moon, or rising. This is the person that is significant or the person that you are liking or the person that, you know, is coming into the picture for this week as a, in your love sector. This is someone who is a little bit hard to please, okay? Uh, very intelligent, very mercurial. It's almost like he's got those, I, I'm picturing the, the, the wings on his head, but also the wings on his feet, ready to flee, okay? If he hears something he doesn't like, he's going to give you a piece of his mind, okay? So I, I feel like the energy might be a little bit difficult when you're dealing with this person, mainly because they're so in their head, you know, they're, they're like great communicator, they're a great... Um, logistics person to have on your side when you're going off to battle. Uh, they're a great person to come to for consultation because they, they kind of find the quickest route to help you troubleshoot and solve all your problems. But as a love relationship partner, this person is just a little bit difficult to deal with. They might not be aware that they're difficult to deal with. They, I, I feel like communication gets lost between you and them, either loss in translation or loss in semantics. They're dwelling on the technicalities of what you're saying rather than really hearing what you're saying. Okay, it's, it's almost like if you've had a bad day and you want to vent to this person, they're like, wait a minute, you spell that wrong or, you know, you did what? Rather than just, you know, being there and being supportive, I feel like they're picking apart your argument. They're trying to get your storyline straight when you're trying to vent. 
And it can be very frustrating because you feel like you're not being heard and you feel like you're not being nurtured and taken care of emotionally. The way that you view this person, I have the high priestess. This is someone who is an enigma. They're full of mysteries. They don't really talk about themselves. There are a lot of things that you want to know about this person. But Taurus, you have a very roundabout way of um, making connections with people. I feel like you wait for the other party to talk and to reveal themselves rather than asking questions. And it's really weird. I don't understand why you guys do that. But I feel like, you know, there are a lot of things that you don't know about this person. They're intriguing. They have a past. They're, they're, it's like that oasis, you know, the mirage in the desert. It's there and then it's not there. You don't know if it's real or if you, you don't know if it's a mirage. And this is a person that has a lot of mysteries. They're enigmatic and they're, they, they just draw you to them. And I feel like the way that they appeal to you, it's very unexplainable and it's very subconscious. You don't know why you're drawn to them. If they're like this, you know, not entirely cuddly and warm and affectionate and, and likable, why are you so drawn to them and you don't know why? I feel like it's a past life thing. Past life karma that the two of you need to live through and kind of um, work out, okay? And the way that you see them, you really, really like them, but you feel almost like they're unattainable, like that mirage in the desert. You feel like they're out of reach. They are also somebody who's a little bit of a loner. They like their own counsel. They like their own company. They like to do things on their own. And a lot of the times when you want to reach out to them, you might feel like, oh no, I think I'm, I'm, I'm um, infringing upon their alone time, or I don't think they want to, you know, talk to me. So I feel like there are a lot of insecurities coming in when you deal with this person. First of all, they're so smart. They're so smart. And then secondly, they operate almost like on their own planet. They're self-contained. They like their own company. They don't need a lot of people. And so they're very enigmatic. And I, I feel like you, you wish you could know more about this person. But then you, if you ask questions, then they're going to know how you feel about them, right? And so you don't ask any questions. And you're left in the dark wondering more about this person. So it's the mystery that's really alluring. And it's the mystery that keeps you guessing, that keeps you interested. That's all it is. So if you really take the time and to, you know, really talk to this person... Um, I feel like some of the, the, the um, plot holes will be filled in and then you might not feel the, the pool anymore, but I feel like it'll still be there because this person is not one that talks about themselves. Okay, the King of Swords, he talks about ideas, he talks about plans, but he doesn't talk about himself. It's not a self-center energy. And I see like this is somebody that talks about ideals and ideas and philosophies and, and, and because of that it's a little bit unnerving as an earth sign and as somebody who's you know very practical who deals with you know the here and now such as yourself it's hard for you to connect to this person who talks about ideas and philosophies and ideals that are not really tangible so that's what I'm feeling here not especially a warm, cuddly type of a person. How they see you and how they feel about you. We have here the temperance. They really admire you. The temperance card is a card about patience. It's somebody who is like left brain and right brain oriented, okay? So this is somebody who kind of has, um, they're creative, but at the same time logical. And... It makes you the perfect candidate to come to in emergencies because you know how to creatively solve problems. You're very dependable. You're very meticulous with the things that you're doing. Okay, so I feel like they really admire you. They admire your, your calmness. It's like a, a, a calm lake, 
okay it's not so regardless of what's happening around you you maintain your decorum you maintain your calmness and they find that very attractive and and i feel like there's mutual attraction you like them and admire them for different things and they like you and admire you for the different qualities so i feel like you know you both admire each other but everything is just very distant like from afar and we have here the temperance card which means they really really see you as someone who's very angelic um it's the angel it's the the person that is like you know that fairy godmother that's there to solve everybody's problems it's very dependable and is there in the nick of time. So I feel like they really admire you. Your ab ability to take care of everything. Your ability to juggle multiple uh, priorities. They admire your work ethics. And they admire the person that you are. You're dependable. The way that they feel about you. Oh yes, so the second message that I got here is trust issues are appearing all over both of these spreads. Trust issues. And once again, this is being on guard, okay? Having a lot of projects on our hands, but kind of guarding ourselves, okay? So it's, it's almost like battle-weary um, in a barren landscape in this card with those wands behind you and you're trying to finish up something. So they see you as someone who's guarded, who has trust issues, who doesn't let people in easily. So in a way, you're very, very similar to them. They don't let people in easily. They keep their own counsel. They don't need advice from other people. And they see that in you as well. And I feel because of that, they like you to be their partner. And so what I have here is this is being guarded. And so they feel like you're, you're not really making the effort to reach out to them. And I also feel like you don't trust them here with the high priestess they feel like they definitely can trust you but they feel like you have trust issues the person that you're dealing with is very psychic and very very intuitive okay they see things that are under the current they read energies they can pick up your energies they can feel what you're feeling and they feel like you need to let your guard down okay if this sounds familiar and you want to make the time to talk to this person, to get to know them, uh, definitely make the time, no matter how they come across. Okay? Air signs like to communicate. So even if they're doing a million things, they like to communicate. And so it's not going to be a bother if you go up to them and, you know, how do you feel about this? How do you feel about that? What is your opinion on this? What is your opinion on that? Those are great conversation starters. Just find the topic that interests them. So even if they like you and the topic doesn't really strike their fancy, they won't want to talk about it, okay? So make sure that you find a topic that they like. So do a little bit of research. Do a little bit of digging. Find topics that are a little bit more, that caters a little bit more to their taste, and they will talk to you for hours. And that way you can get to know them. So segue from that topic that they like into more personal stuff if you want to get to know them. Because I feel like they're an enigma to you and you might get tongue-tied around them. You don't really know how to approach them. And you might feel like, you know, I'm infringing upon their uh, me time and I don't want to be a bother. But you're not a bother. Just make sure you find a topic that strikes their fancy. Um, what is in store for this relationship here? I have the tower and I pulled out two cards to clarify the tower and I got here the eight of swords as well as the justice card and I'm thoroughly confused so with this tower this is sort of like something that is built on a very faulty foundation and once again you know, this energy harkens back to like two weeks ago when you had an air sign show up and the tower came out and I pull the cards and it seems like there's a third party in the picture. I feel like that's what's happening now. With the tower, it's sort of like a major, major paradigm shift. And it basically talks about, you know, 
I, I guess like looking at a situation in a different light and whatever you're, you've built with another person, it might not be entirely stable and you're coming to the realization of that now. Somebody is telling you, I, I feel like there's some information coming to light in this situation. There's some information coming to light and it could indicate as well communication that might be explosive. It's coming from this person, air sign. This is someone who's very, very impatient, okay? Not all air signs, but this particular person for this week, there is an impatient energy about them. And I feel like you're wanting to move towards them. You're wanting to, you know, reach out and give them this cup of love. And I feel like you might be impulsive. So whereas they, they've always felt that you were very cool and calm and collected, this is the week where I feel like your impulses are triggered. Hence the tower. I pulled out two cards to clarify and I have here the Eight of Swords. And the Eight of Swords is being in a situation where we feel very, very stuck. But with the tower, it's kind of like the ungluing process. Things are, whatever you feel has been your mental prison, it's dissipating. It's clearing up this energy so that you can free yourself from this state. She's got that sword hovering over her head and she's like, if I move, it's going to prick me. But the swords are all mental energy. These are kind of like the, the, the lies that we tell ourselves. Why am I in this relationship? It's stable. It's secure. I guess I still love them. But then when the tower hits, that's when we realize, you know what? I'm not happy here. I'm holding myself hostage here because I thought it would get better, but it's not. Or I'm holding myself hostage here because I thought the other person, you know, uh, is good for me, but they're not. Or I thought I love the other person, but I don't. So lots of realization. And we have this massive uh, Venus retrograde period as well, where we are digging deep to really examine what makes us happy, what makes us truly come alive what kind of lover we need, what kind of a love relationship we need. So I feel like you're having some major, major awakening. And honestly, Taurus, you guys, props to you. You stay in situations way past their expiration date. Like you would do things and stay around in things where other fixed signs even would just, you know, turn and, and run the other way. And so I feel like there might be some lies that you have been telling yourself, you know, oh, this is going to work because it's not that bad. So I'm hearing those thought processes, you know, oh, it's not that bad. I can stay in it for another year. I can stay in it for another two years. I can stay in it for another three years. I can stay until the kids, you know, turn 18. So all of these things that you have really kind of like told yourself to stay where you're at, those lies are unraveling and we also have the justice card and the justice card is usually divorce initiation of something legal okay so that's what i have here in your love relationship sector um i don't see so much third parties but i feel like more like you coming into this realization that I have to make some changes. I have to do things differently. I'm not happy. And so in your spiritual advice, I have that tattletale energy, okay? Be careful about what you do, especially if you're doing something you're not supposed to. And then be careful what you do and what you say if you're in the company of somebody who has a habit of repeating what you say verbatim. Or they have a habit of spreading rumors. Or they have a habit of being a tattletale. Just play it smart. Um, lies and slander and, you know, um, whatever people say to kind of uh, undermine you. It's not going to stick, so don't worry, okay? I don't want you guys to worry. I have here the justice card, which is the truth is going to prevail. So whoever wields the sword of truth will get the last say. And we'll get the people to believe them and to come to their defense and to, to come to their side and for things to rule in their favor. So if you're dealing with court situation, 
The truth will be heard by a person who is a moral authority. Okay, they're weighing out, you know, kind of like your soul against a feather. And they're like, that doesn't sound right. I'm not going to believe that. Or the Taurus is right. I'm going to believe the Taurus. The Taurus person has never done anything wrong in the past. And their story sounds logical. Whereas the other story is just hearsay. So I definitely feel many of you, um, court situations, it's going to rule in your favor. And then I also feel as well, um, divorce, separation, child custody, and things like that, things that might get a little bit messy. Um, I feel like it's going to get resolved. Okay. I see with this tower energy, it's kind of like, um, a dwelling that that falls apart so there might be a separation when it comes to dividing up assets five of swords dividing up assets one person wants everything and then the other person is left with nothing depends on what side of the coin you're on but once again I feel like there's other opportunities you know if like you put in for that position and then it was um, like a if you're a guarantee of promotion and it was given to somebody else, there will be new opportunities on the horizon. You just got to scan the horizon for new opportunities for growth, for new opportunities for, you know, victory. So it should be fine. And then we also have here the two of wands and the two of wands. It's um, movement, moving house, changing location as well. OK, moving away from elements that are not good for you and having the resources in order to do that. So it's a week where a lot of things are changing in your environment. And I feel like it starts with a big paradigm shift from your end where you are seeing the reality of a situation where you're like, I can no longer lie to myself about this. I need to make some changes. And then I'm also feeling, um, I actually, I'm so curious about this air sign. It keeps showing up or they keep showing up. So let me just pull out another card okay what is this about are they in a relationship is this a crush or is this an ex or what's going on here ten of swords it's, it seems like it's done and over with I have the six of cups so it's definitely somebody you've been dealing with for quite some time you might have children together you might initiate some type of a breakup They might be holding secrets as well, okay? And I have here the Four of Swords. They might be hiding some things. They might be holding back secrets as well. The High Priestess, she holds back information. She's privy to a lot of information, but she holds back information. So... I hope the reading makes sense to you guys. It's definitely very confusing for me, but I hope it um, resonates with some of you guys and that it's helpful as you navigate the energy for this week, okay?